This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, uh, I try to inspire, of course, and I try to entertain. And uh, it's kind of interesting that the last night I actually get a promo that even inspired my wife, which is kind of a rarity. I mean, you know, that the wife actually says, well, that's an inspirational promo. So let's begin our day with my promo that uh, I gave last night. Now, none of this is original, but I just strung it all together. What are you, the anvil or the hammer? Are you the water which can flow or crash? Are you rigid like a board? Are you a talker or are you a doer? Do you light a candle or do you curse the darkness? Do you rise and shine or do you sleep through the day? Do you stand and deliver or do you sit and cower? Do you step up to the plate and swing or do you prefer the bench? Do you swim out to your ship or wait for it to dock? Do you ask the coach to put you in or do you hide on the sidelines? Will you fight beside your brother or do you run from the storm? Do you lend a helping hand or ignore your neighbor in need? Do you care about the future or do you live only in the past? Do you spend a lifetime learning or stop when the degree is bestowed? Do you use it or do you lose it? Are you a lover or a hater? Are you ready for a dose of radio superbity or a morning a disappointment? That's what I thought. So let's do it. That was my promo, Garrett, that even my wife felt inspired. Pretty good. Real inspiring. You know, people counting on us because, you know, they tune in here because they don't want a geriatric. You know, they don't want that. So we got to keep it youthful yeah. and entertaining. And you know what? Bill Clinton didn't get knocked. You know, he only take he really only gets taken out during the weekends. Weekends. We got to yeah. find out who the weekend guy. We ought to put hidden cameras in here. I think I got an idea who it is. By the way, speaking of cameras, you know that Mike Allen, my lawyer buddy, who has that case in that Norwood cop. And I'll just go ahead and give you uh, police misconduct 101. Uh, clearly excessive force. The only problem with that case is the guy wasn't harmed. I mean, just tell me, it just makes a difference. And I would venture to say that on 5, 9, 12, 19, and other places, that video of that guy getting thrown into the wall has been played more than Michael Godawa getting shot in the back by Officer Bird of the Ellesmere Police Department. And it dawned on me driving in, I'm thinking to myself, Michael Godawa was shot and killed. I mean, I ought to, I ought to have that. And, and, and the cop, by the way, that Norwood police officer has been fired. Not the guy who shot and old uh, Michael Godawa in the back. Pretty interesting. Uh, I got some fun stuff to share with you. And, of course, we have all the news which we will cover. And uh, the news is always, always, is it not interesting? Even if it's a slow news day, there's at least something in there that's good. Uh, Old Yukon saying, if you ain't the lead dog, the scenery never changes. Isn't that the truth? Uh, 1792, George Washington signed an act creating the U.S. Postal Office. All of our pals down at the Dalton Avenue Post post Office uh, were happy. That George Washington signed that. And it's been too long since you all come to see us. Used to come see us all the time upstairs. Uh, 1809, the Supreme Court ruled the federal government has power greater than any state. What else do we have? First Minor League Baseball Association organized in Pittsburgh. And they've been playing Minor League Baseball in Pittsburgh ever since. <laughs> 1944, Batman and Robin comic strip premiered in newspapers. You know, this is a good philosophical question that Williams never used. Why would anyone ever want to be Robin? And is there anybody out there that thinks Robin's a cool, quote-unquote, superhero? He's a freaking gymnast. You know? Yeah. Good God. I mean, like, okay, you, you could go, hey, I don't mind being a, a Hamilton to a George I don't mind being Tonto to the Lone Ranger, but who wants to be Robin to Batman? You know what I'm saying? Completely different. See, that's spectrums. why I came with this console thing, so you wouldn't feel like a Robin. Like I was the number two. Yeah, consoles yeah. are equal, see? I appreciate that. Jimi Hendrix played his first gig today, 1960. 
Uh, John Glenn, first American to orbit Earth. And get this, Friendship 7. What a, why didn't they, why didn't they name these uh, Friendship 7? Why did they name them like Kick Your Ass 3? Yeah. <laughs> With like a big middle finger yeah. icon pointing at Russia. That's right. On the way up. Yeah. We don't yeah. like you, Russia. Never did like you. Yeah, you stay the hell out of here. Man, I forgot to send you music, but not a bad I know. I, like yeah, I was just looking through some of the ones we Good had stored choice. up. Good there. choice there. You. Your babe, Rihanna, is 25. <clears throat> I don't care for Ain't her. my babe. I don't like her. Justin Verlander, the Tigers pitcher, who, by the way, has partaken of Kate Upton at the time or two. Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah, Scott. Mm-hmm. He's Good partaking. For him. Yeah, is that still, it might still be going on. Cindy Crawford know. is 47. No, I thought we heard she was single the other day. Oh. People use her and abuse her and discard her. Charles Barkley, goofball, 50. Sidney Portier, man, I thought he was dead and gone. He's 86. Kurt Cobain, your man, Kurt Cobain. I bet both of you all love old Kurt, don't you? Grunge. Were you all grungers? Go to the grunger stage, man. You know, yeah, but I'll be honest. I kind of think honest, Nirvana's. Yeah, their hits. I, they're. I think they're a little overrated. I think if he hadn't died, it'd be a yeah. little different story. Their hurts. Their their, their uh, hits are good. The rest of it, yeah. they're not deep. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. He's a weird dude. That's weird. ladies and gentlemen, the American Jerry. We got a better song than Nirvana, anyway. You know what we have for you for your listening pleasure. By the way, today's weather mostly sunny. Do you not know how to turn that off, Air uh, Garrett? I don't. Uh, Thursday, mostly sunny. Friday is cloudy. This is Nickelback, rock star. Don't you wish you were a rock star? I wish I was a rock star. Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. We have made an administrative decision here this morning that we're going to play ACDC for the rest of the day. We're just going to play ACDC. And we'll play some of those hits that weren't like the front line hits, too, as well, you know. Of course, we love our jailbreak, only because I'm a lawyer. Deep album cuts? Deep, yeah, deep album cuts. The most obscure ACDC songs that you could ever listen to. Coming up right now here on Class X Radio. 98 per- hey, I wonder how the staff meeting was last night. By the way, good job. You got your little bio. Hope you sent the picture to Jake. I didn't send a picture. I'm hoping Spry has one or can rip one off my Facebook page. All right. Hear that, Spry? Did Jake do a little bio? I don't know. Uh, 98% of Japanese are cremated. I bet you Jake didn't do a bio. I bet you didn't either. And you know why? 98% Jake, you do a bio? You, do a bio? Yeah. you did? Did you send it to him? Uh-huh. Yeah, it Good job. Uh, Good did. job. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if uh, Traffic Girl did. <laughs> Traffic Girl's all about getting her name in the magazine. Do you know if Traffic Girl, like, makes it to Playboy that... We'll be famous. Oh, we can go to the Playboy we'll, Mansion as we'll guests. Use, we'll use Traffic Girl to make us famous. Yes. See, like right now, she's just Traffic Girl. But if she like would be like Miss October, then we'll be like her entourage instead of her like being just our Traffic Girl. The roles will be reversed. Yeah. I'm going to try to marry her, then divorce her, take her for all she's worth. Garrett, you shouldn't have said that on the air. She might be listening to way in. You just blew it. Damn, dang, man. You've tipped her off. Shoot. Well, what the hell? You know why 98% of them are cremated, though? because they don't have enough room to bury them. I was going to say, we're going to run out of room. One of these days, <laughs> a cemetery in every corner. Uh, John Adams was the first president to have a billiards table installed in the White House. He learned to play the game while a diplomat. Hey, you want to shoot some pool over to the White House? I like pool. You a good pool player? Nah, I'm an average pool player, yeah. but I like playing pool. Thought you, Jake, and probably kick all your asses. I don't think there's any doubt that you could. Five bucks, Garrett. Ah. Let's go. Molly Malone's have a pool table. See there at seven. The Black Widow's venom is more potent than a rattlesnake's. Well, what difference does it make if you die from both? You know what I'm saying? No. The average brain is about 100 billion nerve cells. My guess is the people that have been doing, like, heavy drugs for a long period of time, they're probably down their last billion, you know? Hold on, I have a spider question for Jake. Do you, would it would that actually hurt to get bit by a black widow, or is it like a normal I, I spider bite? The, bite? the bite itself would hurt, but right. the venom would. I'd rather get bit by the black widow than a big snake just clinging onto your arm. Wow. I don't, know. I don't, I don't think the rattlesnake. Would, well, it depends on what kind of snake, but it wouldn't kill you. Hmm. I think, I think uh, a black widow could kill you. 
Ronald Reagan's first wife, Jane Wyman, starred in the movie. You're in the Army now. In mm. this movie, she was on the receiving end of a three-minute kiss. I wonder if that's why they got divorced. I can tell you right now, if my wife, my sweet Mary, was in a movie and some dude kissed her for three minutes, I'd be off my chair on the set and I'd be wailing on his head. How do you sit there and watch somebody kiss your wife for any time? I couldn't deal with that. There's no way. If I ever become an actor, I'm just going to have to do like action flicks. Just like Die Hard. (laughs) Yeah, Die Hard. Good day to Die Hard. Good day to Die Hard. You know, they worked on that movie, you know, title. They played around a little bit. And they were thinking about, should you die hard or soft landing? Um, die limp? Yep. <laughs> uh, die <laughs> die shriveled? <laughs> I was a, spider's we- a spider's web is not a home, but rather a trap for its food. Duh. Thanks, William. Uh, ancient Egyptians shaved off their eyebrows. Now this is messed up. You don't wonder why. You wonder why freaking Egypt is still messed up to this day. Ancient Egyptians shaved off their eyebrows to mourn the death of their cats. What a screwed. You know what? Cats. Maybe they built the pyramids, but I think they were stupid people. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt was the first president to call the White House the White House. John Adams called it the President's Mansion. Hmm. In the average lifetime, a person will walk the equivalent of five times around the equator. Wow. Really? That's a lot of walking. Uh, Wild man walker will do it once. He'll do half a lap. Yeah, half a lap. Egyptian people have been more zinc and copper in their hair. Intelligent people have more zinc and copper in their hair. I wonder why. That's weird. Hmm. What about people that don't have any hair like you? I don't know. Good question. The most sensitive cluster of nerves is the base of the spine. Well, I would think so. It's the central nervous system. Jeez, old mate. William, you know what? You get this stuff. I don't know, man. Facts for dummies. Hey, Psh. I was just thinking something. You know, can you can you see a, a better combination of flags than this? American, Irish, Marine Corps. Now, just think about that. An Irish-American Marine has got to be one hot-headed badass. <laughs> think about that. An Irish-American Marine, hot-headed badass. Uh, which is superior, mind or matter? Hmm. Hmm. I say minds over matter. Uh should we do the humor joke blind? Let's do the humor joke blind, because if it sucks, we'll just make fun of William. Yep. <laughs> hey, kindergarten class. Uh, hey, William, are you coming in Friday? I've invited William to come in and explain himself. Yeah, he knows the drill. You bring food, he always William. Says, he always says he will, but then he doesn't. William, you're invited Friday. A kindergarten class at a homework assignment to find out about something exciting and relate it to the class the next day. When the time came to present what they'd found, the first little boy walked up to the front of the class, made a small white dot on the blackboard, and sat back down. Puzzled, the teacher asked him just what it was. Oh, my God. I can't read. Is it dirty? It's, 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 It's okay for the newsletter, but not on radio. My gosh. Look at that. We're teasing the the audience. Go to the newsletter, Facebook. Shakespeare for your day. I know the hand in faith. Tis a fair hand, and wider than the paper it writ on is the fair hand that writ. Oh, you know so what that means? Stupid. I have no freaking idea. You know, I think Shakespeare was probably doing some psychedelics oh, at yeah. times. Little mushrooms, maybe. You mushrooms, know? A little LSD. A little LSD. Uh, quadra, quadra intestinal. Quadra, quadra Gentesimal. There we go. Quadragentesimal. 40 fold, having 40 parts. Hmm. Wouldn't you like to have a harem, Garrett, of a quadragentesimal? Uh, by the way, by the way, here's a little known fact. Did you know that Bill Spry once lived in a commune that included some very famous rock stars? Really? Before Mary and Rhonda? Yeah, he lived out west in in a in a in an actual commune. Wow. 
Can what, he name any of these rock stars? I wonder if he experienced any quadrigentesimals in a, in a commune. When we come back, we got some pop culture, including an interesting fact about that uh, country music star, McCready. It's kind of a sad little story, but we'll report it anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, all morning, it's ACDC. And you know what? Who made who? We love you, Mo, on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, how about this? McCready, remember all the news about McCready was a suspect in killing her husband? Remember that? Guess what? The sheriff said she was never a suspect. She was never a target or anything else. Now, here's the thing. If that was out in the public, how come the sheriff didn't come out and say that when she was alive? Isn't that sad? I mean, I wonder if that led to her death. You know? Yeah, everybody thinking she did it. Jeez. You know, this is pop culture, and part of pop culture is going to the zoo. I wonder if we got our zoo, our resident zoologist, Jake the Snake Slagle, also a hockey player and a backup producer <laughs> and sometimes college student and former Hollywood student. Playboy Hollywood. Playboy, playboy. Hollywood playboy, yeah. better put. Yeah. Nice. If he's got anything. You got anything for us? I got nothing. No. Nothing yet? Nothing. All right. <laughs> Still training him. Well, you have something before the show's over. Yeah, I could, I could probably do that. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I got, I got, I'm going to ask for something. Hey, I got a freshest run. Hey, you know, yeah, we'll do a freshest run. I got, yeah, whenever you want to, freshest okay. run, I'll take your regular. But I got, I got to say this. This is funny. Let's you and I, each morning, tell him what Ooh. animal we want. A fact about. So here's the deal. In honor of our wall. And, and let me tell you something, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll have to announce when. Where are you when, going with this? We'll have to announce. No, no, no. We'll have to announce when, Jake. But sometime, uh, we got to tell everybody to tune in the show at a certain time. And we will show by videotape our wall. But mm. you know you know what we have on our wall is foxes. These are yeah. foxes. So how about a fun fact about a fox today, yeah, Jake? On it. All right. Stone cold fox. Stone cold right. fox. People can't see that. the wall. I love that word. Fox. fox. You know, yeah, that's, that's a good that's a great word for a yeah. beautiful woman. And She's a, fox a fox is a cool animal. Absolutely. And then, of course, we got Jimmy. Hey, and you know, like for the day, we'll do Foxy Lady while he's reporting on it. Boy, we got, I could be a producer. Yeah. Hey, listen, you, you are the assistant producer I'm of our show. I'm supposed to be coming up with these ideas. Garrett and, I, Garrett and I are co-producers of your zoo report. Okay. See, so we turn the tables. Approved. Fox, and we'll play Foxy Lady during it. Right. Oh, God, this is going to be good. I'm excited about it. Uh, <laughs> let me those, see. Uh, foxes are Clive Davis, the soundtrack of my life. For the first time in his book, he admits he's bisexual. By the way, bisexual. I would tell you, would that not creep you out if you were married to some, especially as a, if to me as a woman, like oh my god, bisexual. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm different. I mean, woman bisexual, I can deal with a guy bisexual. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a little. I weird. always thought this would be weird. Like some dudes fooling around with some chick that he thinks is smoking hot and all that. Come to find out that, like, her ex-boyfriend was bisexual. <laughs> yeah. What if you turn someone gay? How bad would that be? Oh, I'd be devastating. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually, you know, I take... I, okay, here's a good philosophical question for you, William. You come home early from work. Your wife's in bed with another man or another woman. I say woman. What you oh, say? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. She's in bed with another man. I'm going bonkers. Another woman, I'd be like... Uh, okay. Hop in there. Okay. Okay. I, okay. I'll give you some privacy. Okay. I'll I'll wait outside, uh-huh. or or sit over there. Whatever you want me to do. But a guy you'd be like wailing on, on somebody, man. Yeah. Tupac. His bro. mother said she's working to make sure the entire catalog of her son's unreleased work is released to the public. That's cool. Yeah. Good. Tupac survives. Afina Shakur. That's her name. Yeah. Mila Kunis said she won't. Mila. You won't Mila. see her fully naked on film. Has shown parts of her upper extremities. I don't need to show ass. You get one or the other. You don't get both. Wow. So we're getting one or the other. You're going to get the ass on one, the other parts on the other. What movie? I don't know. By by the way, I want to tell you something. You know what? When people, the reason why they listen to our show is because we're real. You know, we call it the way it is. Why is it? We're all such voice. I was watching this movie late last night, and it was called 
there was like four M's in it. It's about this woman that was like in a cult or something. And she, she like went and lived with her sister. And I'm not kidding you. It was amazing to me how the way the camera angle worked, the way they showed her breasts, even when they didn't show her breasts completely. Why is it that we're so attracted to that? And this was, I mean, this was a kind of a, it was a rated R movie, but it was like, Jesus, us guys, we see, we want to see them naked, don't we? And then when you see them naked, it's like, well, yeah, it's all right. Kind of weird when you think about it. If I, if I gotten off the, the, I think I've gotten off track a little, a little bit. bit. All right. Sorry. Just reel it in. Uh, Hotmail users say goodbye, though. Hotmail, 60 million email users will keep their email addresses. Hotmail.com will convert to Outlook. You know, we got to come up, we got to reserve Hot Bulldog. Christopher Dorner, TMZ reports that someone is shopping photos of his dead body. I, for one, who wants to see that guy's dead body? Yeah, not his. I mean, no I, would, I would want to see Bin Laden's. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I would want to see yeah, his. Damn about that. Uh, Billy Cannon, the former Heisman Trophy winner and pro player, Billy Cannon was hospitalized in Louisiana after suffering a stroke. Did you ever see that movie that was pl- he pl- was played by uh, Dennis Quaid? He played him, and uh, Jessica Lang was his wife. Good movie. If everybody's all American, good hmm. movie. True story. Tiger Woods on golfing with Obama. He said he played in cool, windy, tough conditions, and then if he ever spent after these four years spent more time playing the game of golf, I'm sure he would get to where he's pretty good stick. What? Basically, basically sucks. Obama sucks in golf. By the way, you know what? Think about it. Nothing's worse than playing in the wind. Though. Yeah, but isn't Obama? Doesn't he just exude wimpiness? Yeah. I mean, I mean, is, is there any part of Obama that you think, man, he's a he's a man's man? Not at all. He's got he's a metrosexually kind of guy. Yeah. Floyd Mayweather Jr. His next fight will be against Robert Guerrero on May the fourth. So much for that big money day payday, I guess. With uh, who was the who was the guy that got Pacquiao? Beat? Pacquiao got beat. Uh, yeah, that that ship has now sailed. Terrible yeah. missed opportunity for you're Pacquiao. Not, you're not kidding. Boxing. That's why boxing sucks. They can't get their two best fighters to fight, and now they're not the best anymore. Aaron Boone predicts the Reds will win the World Series. Wow. Thanks, Booney. Uh, how about this? UK host Vanderbilt tonight at Rupp. Do you think they'll win? Ugh. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here. UK by one. <laughs> Vandy sucks, though, don't they? I think Vandy Yeah, but still, good. man, UK. They lost their big stud player last year. Vanderbilt did. Uh, what else do we have here that's worthy of sports? Indiana beat Michigan State 72-60. I think Indiana's real. It's big. Indiana's real. Uh, Miami of Florida is number two, 54, Virginia 50. I never think of Miami's a basketball team, do you? No, not the Miami Hurricane. Well, I mean, you not just don't, Miami Redhawks. You just, Red you just don't think of them as such. Missouri. You know who they got? Upset is Florida. Barry's son this year. Yeah, Barry Larkin. That's right. Barry Larkin. Uh, let me see. We got UK. If anybody else is playing tonight, is you, are your Bearcats playing? No, tomorrow night. How about this? Gonzaga Bulldogs are ranked third. Xavier plays Rhode Island at seven. There's a game of local interest for you. Uh, William just likes puts like all fifty of them together. He doesn't like put the teams, yeah. local teams first or anything else. William, you, know? you got to filter through the them. things that we got to tolerate for William. I know. I love the guy. By the way, I can't stand him. Those of you, <laughs> those of you that are going to tune in Friday, like if William finally shows up here during some part of the show, you're going to be impressed. I mean, he's kind of a hunky guy. Tall, dark, and handsome is what comes is to he? mind. I mean, he is tall, dark, and handsome. And yeah. the ladies, William will probably. You know, there'll be some ladies who probably want a poster of the guy. He's a hunk. You think? I think, oh, yeah. Shannon will Shannon, be. Man. Shannon will be all over William. There we go, Shannon. All over Found William. your new boyfriend. Charming guy. Hey, have you asked her out yet? Next UC game? When's the next UC game? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, you don't want William's leftovers, huh? Shannon, we're just teasing about you. We know you get to pick who you want to go out with. This is Back in Black on Class X. You know what? That Ursula Andress photo is very good on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, traffic girl, I guess, will be in here soon. If not, we will fire her and uh, find pla- traffic boy. No, we ain't going to have a traffic boy. 
And by the way, I think this is weird, don't you? We put that uh, cleaning dude on one time, and we never see him again. That Keith guy? Yeah. Whatever happened to him? Our Joe Dirt was like one and done. Were you missing any money the other day? No. Out of your wallet? I hope not, man. By the way, I got, off with some cash. I got a funny story to tell you know about. I uh, can't believe I'm going to say this on the radio. But I'm going to say it on the radio anyway. We had a field party once. And um, the Thomas Moore security guy, he was a Cuban-American. Looked Cuban-American, acted Cuban-American, all that good stuff. His daughter, unbeknownst to me, was at this field party, okay? And I'll never get going to school the next day, and he's saying, hey there, and he was really nice to me and stuff, and he goes, I heard you're going to be going out with my daughter. And I was like, Whoops. uh... <laughs> 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 no. I, I was like, uh, we did she tell you we're getting married or something? What the <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, you don't know those Cubans the, be Cuban, locked in the I didn't know. I mean, did I do something that I'm stuck here? By the way, folks, there was no <laughs> fornication, all right? There was nothing like that. Oh. Anyway, it's funny though. Huh. Nine year old girls in critical condition uh, condition after an accidental shooting. Here's your local news. Brown County resident Sebastian Schwartz shot in the head by a gun he found in his parents' bedroom. Yay, 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 yay. Uh, the governor gave his state of the state address, and he says it's an unprecedented opportunity to bring $13 billion back to Ohio to fix our problems. Speaking of the Medicaid Obamacare. You know, reason why he did that? Because he wants that handout just like everybody else, so-called Mr. Conservative. Uh, he has been contacted for an interview in Detroit. I think James Craig's gone. And he said he wouldn't rule out the accepting the position. Oh, by the way, he was on that radio station called The Buzz yesterday at 10-something. Uh, somebody alerted me to the fact. You know what he said on the, he's about police shootings and whatnot? He said, well, sometimes you just got to open up the checkbook. And I'm like, okay, I'll remember that. A bunch of the lawyers for the city were going, hey, 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 hey. Chief, don't be talking like that. Yeah. Uh, the fiscal court in Kenton County is proposing the government recognize the Brent Spence replacement as a project of national significance, and the federal government should cover 80% of the cost to replace the bridge. It's a cop-out. They should pay 100% of the cost of the bridge. They say $417 billion in freight crosses the bridge each year. Mm-mm-mm. A Hamilton County resident, Meloise Richardson, is allegedly being investigated for only voting six times in the 2012 election. <laughs> only six times. Why would you do that? Come yeah. on. Uh, what else do we have locally? Xavier University. Students living in Xavier neighborhoods feel campus police aren't doing enough to inform them of dangerous situations. Students say they've heard gunshots, seen shootings on the news, but have not received notices from the police. Hey, Xavier students, you live in a rough part of town. Be careful. Yeah, really. Now, do they need more than that? I thought Xavier students were supposed to be smart. Yeah. They're not. UC's better. UC's UC better. does a real good job. Of I always them. warn you. Uh, like, like, you know. I understand why when you're walking around UC, they have it over the loud horn. Please be careful. There might be somebody with a gun trying to shoot at you. Yep. And they blare that over the speakers yeah. the whole time over you're walking around speaker. campus. Yeah. And everybody just kind of continues on. It's a normal thing. By the way, I, I somebody uh, came to see me yesterday and wanted me to represent their son who's in jail. And they said, um, well, I said, what's he in there for? He goes, oh, well, it's a sex, sex case. I said, oh, okay. What is it? What kind of case? I, hey, she was only 15. I said, oh, okay, no problem. Then. She's only 15. <laughs> Creepy, man. Can you imagine being a 15-year-old? Mm. Mm. And by the way, I admit I'm the double standard guy. 15-year-old boy. Doesn't matter. Right. 15 year old girl. Eh, yucky. Pogue's Garage in Cincinnati at Fourth and Race is going to be demolished. And the plans are for a grocery store. How cool is that? A grocery store downtown. Much needed, I'm sure, for those people that live downtown. Uh, Cincinnati City Manager Milton Dahoney 
wants the Port of Greater Cincinnati Development Authority to lease the city's on-street parking for 30 years. Oh, by the way, I can't believe I almost forgot. Guess who's coming on with us at 8.30 this morning? Yeah. United States Senator and future president Rand Paul from Kentucky. Oh. Rand Paul, 8.30 this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury will be on with us. Got to like that. Uh, the Cincinnati Auto Expo is the Duke Energy Convention Center from today through Sunday. Now you like that? Well, let me see. What else do we have? A U.S. Supreme Court campaign donations. They're going to hear arguments about that. They're going to hear a case about search warrants. <laughs> now this is funny. A 33-year-old New York mother, Judy Viger, rhymes with Viagra, was arrested Monday for endangering the welfare of a child. Some of the children at the party were as young as 13. Strippers were photographed cleaning upside down to a teenager. You know what? When you host that party for the 13-year-old boys, you got you shouldn't bring strippers. You wait till they're 14. 14 years old, it's acceptable. 13, it is not. Don't you agree, Garrett? Absolutely. Or 13 and a half, maybe. Yeah, you know, 14 is just too much. Uh, what else do we have here? Ask all. Oh, when we come back, we got to save this when we come back from the break. That's called baiting you. We're baiting you. Jeez. We come back. We're going to talk about Oscar Pistorius and what he says happened. Is it believable or is it a bunch of crap? We'll find out. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, traffic girl's in the house. She's putting on her uniform. This is Money Talks by ACDC. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio, ladies and gentlemen of the American jury. Traffic girl, good morning. I think yesterday I gave some outstanding introductions to break up the monotony of uh, just going to a bland traffic report. Did you enjoy those? I loved it. Are you going to do it today? Uh, Yes. After this one, I will continue the tradition that we've established of being a poetic introducer of the traffic report. Okay, good. Until that time, <laughs> is there anything going on in traffic? In Cincinnati, there is a road closed due to an accident on Highway 32, both eastbound and westbound between Little Dry Run Road and Eight Mile Road. Little Dry Run. Uh, it's out in Anderson. Be safe over there, people. Be safe. Meet as many of you in the world as possible. <laughs> Unless you're coming from Amelia, I don't give a damn. Be safe and be well. <laughs> Garrett just loves everybody. I mean, that's, what, that's just his personality. All right, get this. According to Oscar Pistorius yesterday in court in South Africa, here's what happened. He's in bed. He hears an intruder. He thinks his girlfriend, supermodel, is still in bed. He's yelling for somebody. He gets up, puts on his artificial legs, goes to the bathroom, Thinks the burglar is high in the bathroom, and he fires four shots into the door. And then when he realizes who it was, he then broke in and tried to save her, and she died in his arms. Now, are you kidding me? Hey, if you're yelling, she's not going to be. I hate to admit this because I'm a defense attorney. I do... First off, I kind of admit it, pretty creative. Like, that's pretty good that his defense attorney came up with that kind of a story. But do you believe that, Garrett? Uh, not anymore. I thought when it first came out, I, I probably gave him the benefit of the doubt. But. It's a good, it's a good, I mean, come on. Yeah. You're, not you're, after you're, what I heard about the bat. Yeah, you're just going to fire full four bullets into the bathroom at a burglar, and the burglar breaks into your house and hides in the bathroom. Right. Why wouldn't you just say, well, I'm calling the police, and uh, I got a gun out here. You come out here, I'm going to shoot you. She would say, it's me in here. If he's uh, yelling. Exactly. And she would have woken up when he was yelling when she right. was still in bed. Right. Yeah. Mm, Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. You killed a beautiful woman. And you know what this is a classic thing of? If I Oscar can't have you, If I can't have you, nobody. Oh, did you hear about the text messages? Oh, yeah. She was texting a famous rugby player. Oh, uh, well. Mm-hmm. Rugby. Mm-hmm. I want to tell you something. Can you imagine what it must be? I, I, I couldn't deal with it. You're, you're super famous, and you can date, you know, girls like Reva Steenkamp or whatever. But there's always some other hunk that she can go out besides you, too. I mean, I mean, it would drive me nuts. Yeah. 
I mean, like, okay, you're Matt Why Damon. Why you just stay single and just... You know, if you're, like, okay, let's say you're single and you're Matt Damon. You get possible. dumped so she can go out with Ben Affleck, your buddy. And then they dump Ben Affleck to go out with George Clooney. And then they dump George Clooney to go out with Tom Brady. I mean, it's yeah. just... It's ever endless. A revolving door in the celebrity world. When you become famous, are you going to get in that revolving door there? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about the revolving door. I tell you, now this is, this is so messed That's up. That's sick, According to Christian Science Monitor, a nurse at a Michigan hospital has filed a lawsuit against her employer claiming hospital officials granted a man's request to prohibit black nurses for caring for his newborn child. In the suit, the American says a note was posted on assignment clipboard that said, no African-American nurse to take care of baby. Now, I don't think there's a lawsuit there, but that's terrible. That's pretty horrible. You know who took care of me when I was a little baby? And my brothers and sisters, true story. Remember, I was one of 11 kids. My dad was the lawyer and the chairman of the board at St. Elizabeth Medical Center. Well, there was a black woman who was the head of St. Elizabeth's uh, newborn babies. Her name was Ruth Baxter. Okay? My dad paid her. Now, just think, you talk about getting taken care of. The head of the lady taking care of the newborn at St. E's would come out to the house and stay when my mom would have a newborn baby to help my mom and help her out with all of us kids. Pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Personal. And you know what? We didn't care that you, and by the way, Growing up, I was always around her, and then there was another woman that helped out. Her name was Jessie, and uh, Jessie had a, uh, a little girl. I remember playing with this, this little black girl that was at the house all the time. She was so funny. She, she drove the lawnmower once, and she ran it into the house. <laughs> oh, she, came, she came running into the house. Mama, mama, I wrecked the tractor in the house. Oh, that vision is just stuck in my head. God, what was her name? A lot of black women are sweet ladies. Chris, oh, let me tell you about, Feisty. Let me tell you about Chris Baxter. Sweet. Chris Baxter said uh, we, that we were all scared one time, and uh, Chris Baxter says, don't you all be afraid. Somebody comes in this house, I got a two-by-four, I'll just smack him right upside the head. And we, we felt <laughs> safe. Chris Baxter was going to take yeah. care of things with a two-by-four. Oh, Chris. Not, that's, that's, Beat the hell this out day of and age, the they're still racist like that. Pretty incredible, isn't yeah. it? No African-American nurse to take care of this baby. Give me a break. Oh, well. (sighs) Obama's weekend golf trip. By the way, people don't realize he played with Tiger in Florida. He he didn't play in Hawaii. He played in Florida. Million dollars. I wonder if they clubbed. (laughs) Hey, Tiger, Tiger, (laughs) what's your secret, man? (laughs) I wonder what Michelle thought about him hanging out with Tiger That's in Florida. That's a good dad. Yeah. Well, she was in Colorado. Mm-hmm. She was in the hot tub with, uh, who was in the hot tub with her? I'm just making it up. Freaking Michelle. <laughs> I don't like her. Yeah, B.O. had a nice little bachelor weekend, didn't he? Yeah, oh, no. big time. Uh, the Country Club Plaza in Kansas City, an upscale entertainment shopping district, was set ablaze by an explosion by a... Caused when a car actually crashed into a gas main yesterday. Did you see this? Jeez. Man, it was burning down the house. Sounds like something out of Die Hard. Good day, Good to, day die to Die Hard. hard. <laughs> Good day to Die Hard. Um, they had a lot of problems naming that movie. They didn't know, you know, they could go either they way. Die Shriveled. Die Shriveled. Die Shrunken. Shrunken. Shrinkage. Um, Joe Biden. A limp noodle. Re. We. Will you sorry, stop sorry, I'm just trying to... He told his wife, Jill, if there's ever a problem, just walk out of the balcony here, walk out, put that double-barrel shotgun, and fire two blasts outside the house. I promise whoever's coming in, you don't need an AR-15. It's harder to aim. It's harder to use. Buy a shotgun, buy a shotgun. You know, for a guy that wants gun control, he sure is obsessed with shotguns. You know what I mean? Like He's obsessed. Shotguns. How about this? Democratic Colorado State Rep Joe Salazar says... Uh, it's why we have call boxes. It's why we have safe zone. It's why we have whistles. Because you just don't know you're, who you're going to be shooting at. He said women who are being raped shouldn't have guns because they might irrationally shoot somebody that they shouldn't. <laughs> what an incredible <laughs> jack wagon. Now, I got to ask this. Does this mean we shouldn't reelect Barack Obama? 
Hey, Jake, do you got the Fox fact yet? If you do, we'll come back to you after this break. Okay. Do you have one? Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> not a very confident. Confident. Not very encouraging. Oh, uh, I, I, yeah. you, know, you know what it's going to be? Garrett's going to be this. Yeah. There's two kinds of foxes, gray and red. Yeah. Let, let us tell you what we already know about foxes, Jake, so we can avoid anything. We know they have four <laughs> legs. They're hairy. They're kind of hairy, kind of a burnt orange. When they are hungry, they get kind of mangy. Yeah. They're they, apparently pretty slick. They have a tail. Um, I hit one one time with my car. <laughs> Uh, I know all these things. I know yeah, how to so fox hunt. I'm going to tell you, those of you that don't know how to fox hunt, I mean besides at the bars, I'm going to sh- tell you how you fox hunt. It's pretty cool. Have you ever fox hunted? The bars. Yeah, the bars. Struck Never get out. One. <laughs> struck Bagged out. a couple. Struck out. Struck out. Hey. Why are as, you so as my good Shan, friend struck out? out. Yeah, Shan. Why do I think you struck out? Yeah, why do you think, why would I strike out? <laughs> I have no idea, Garrett. You don't think I could strike up a convo at a bar? Hey, Garrett, it might be, abs. Garrett, might be because of your, both your personality and your looks is probably why you would strike out. Uh, we just, we just feel that Barney has a much fat and flabbier physique. We're going to go the uh, other direction. Babe Ruth once said, never let the fear of striking out get in your way. There you go. go. Ladies and gentlemen, American jury, we dedicate this song to Hamilton County's finest prosecutor, because this is his nickname, and and Willie's song, Joseph TNT. Not Robbie. I might come up with a song for Robbie on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, you know, there's many of you that ride the bus. There's many of you that are so wealthy you take a helicopter and plane. Some of you might even take a boat to work, like the Anderson Ferry. Some of you might ride a bike or even a scooter, like Steve Horsmeyer. But most of you, like me, get into your car every day and drive the interstate or the other side roads of this great tri-state area to get to work. And to help you get there safely... We give you Shannon, the traffic girl. In Cincinnati, there is a road closed due to an accident on Highway 32, both eastbound and westbound between Little Dry Run Road and Eight Mile Road. In Hamilton County, an accident on the ramp to I-275 westbound at US 42 Lebanon Road. In Cincinnati, a disabled vehicle blocking the right shoulder on 71 northbound south of Red Bank Road and a disabled vehicle on Columbia Parkway at Delta Avenue. Thank you, Shannon. That was outstanding syntax. Thank you. Uh, all right. It's all right. It is now time for the zoo report from our resident zoologist. And the reason why we do this is because we know America loves animals. We don't, but we know you do. So we're sucking up to all you animal lovers. So you got the music ready, Garrett? No, because Garrett's playing around with his music. What music? Oh, the my Foxy God. Lady. Oh, Foxy oh, Lady. Oh, I wasn't even here uh, to know right, that. Now, now, we have to hold off. I'll, I'll yeah. keep talking about something else. Okay, one, I once fox hunted, okay? And actually, I did this more than once. Here's how you fox hunt. You get a tape. We had an 8-track tape of baby foxes crying. And you go out into a the woods, and like an open meadow area, and you put that in there, and you have a spotlight that will blind the fox. The foxes come out looking for the baby fox, and you blow them away really sad it's kind of spooky sitting Jeez. out in the middle of a field Just. listen to baby fox cries now the whole time i did that we never oh. shot a fox i never shot a fox we were and just scared all right now let now here we go what do you think about that jake Gar- hunting jake and i or garrett and i picked out <laughs> fox is the animal that we wanted to hear from today yeah. so let's see what you got jake okay foxes are members of the dog family a female guess that. fox is called a vixen. Ooh, vixen. Ooh. Now fox we know why is, we got vixens. Right. Look at all those vixens on the wall. A male fox is called a dog fox. Baby <laughs> dog. foxes are called pups, kits, or cubs. A group of foxes are called a skulk or a leash. We just wanted one fact. Didn't yeah, we? one fact. One Jake. fact. Just okay. keep right, it. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. You you want to give us all the facts instead of one? Yeah, fox are the only kind of dogs that can climb trees. Wait a minute. A fox can climb a tree? Mm -hmm. Now, that's an interesting fact. Because when we were out there fox hunting, we never saw any fox in the trees. They were all in the ground. I didn't see any fox hiding in the tree. All right, Jake, your homework. Go find a fox in a tree tonight. (laughs) And photograph it. Yeah, well, of course. (laughs) You know what? 
Now we know why they call guys dogs. Yep. Uh-huh. And the women is a fox, is a vixen. I think we did a good job of producing that segment. We had the fox music. Yes, we did. You know, Jake, actually, you did a pretty good job with the tree thing. It saved you there. Hey, I got a real important question to ask you. Yes. If If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, that's easy. That would be invisibility. Nice. Yeah, that's mine, too. The fun that you could have. Yeah. Sneak in my places. Second, my second would be able to read minds because I always thought, how cool would this be on a jury? Like, you, you can you can tell a juror saying, I really wonder what really happened about so-and-so. And you could be sitting there giving your closing argument and say, and you know what? Some of you might be wondering. <laughs> and you could just answer all their questions. Or a person's on a witness stand and they say, God, man, I hope he doesn't ask me about this. Uh, you know, one final question. <laughs> I mean, it would be a blast to be able to read minds. See, my second would be... A judge saying, if Dieter stands up and says, one more thing, I'm going to hold him in contempt. No, Your Honor, that's all I got. (laughs) But it also would be bad. Like your wife would say, if your wife would say, God, Eric's gotten so fat and ugly. God, why'd I marry him? That would be kind of... So you think go with the bad. See, that's a problem. (laughs) If you notice, if you notice in all the superpower movies, they struggle. With their powers. That's true. I could really know what Shannon was thinking about. Like, I, you know, she's probably like. Shannon, what are you what thinking about, Garrett, right worthless. now? Worthless. I'm thinking about mine would be to fly. Fly? And how cool mine, that would be. I would want to shoot lasers out of my wrist. That might have been be a third one. Two. What, well, how about this, though? I think number two for me, really, screw reading the mind things. That'd be kind of spooky. Is uh, regeneration like uh, uh, Wolfman. Not Wolfman. Um, Wolverine. What when you get hurt? Wolverine, you yeah, just... you get hurt. You regenerate, man. See, I always thought I always thought Wolverine wasn't all that big of a. I don't know. You know, always got those titanium blades. But then I said, regeneration's a pretty good. I don't uh, want to live that long. You though. can't kill him unless you cut his head off. So you'd have to go around, you know, life like with a special metal thing on your neck in case yeah, somebody snuck up and cut your brace. head off. You know. Thank you for that nice diversion. You know, we go to Fox. Yeah. Nobody really cared about superheroes right now. There's no superhero movies out. It was totally a relevant question. It's true. Thanks. I uh, here's something. anytime. <laughs> I had that. <laughs> you know what? When I, t- I talk about if something is complicated for you, it's bad. I-, I cannot stand the fact that they call this sequestration, which is basically like force cuts in the budget. And they come up with this. Why don't they just say mandatory budget cuts? But no, the government and Congress has to call sequestration. So when they're talking about it on their news, so nobody can understand. So they think they're smart. about Sequestration. Here's the other thing. Gun, you hear about this internal memo that the Washington uh, Justice Department has? They, instead of just calling it like gun confiscation, they're calling it the only way to make sure this gun policy would work would be mandatory buybacks. Mandatory buyback. Hmm. Confiscation. <laughs> Do they think people are stupid? You can phrase it, you know. Like, okay, let's say uh, the death penalty. Um... Death penalty, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Instead of calling it a death penalty, which is kind of scary, they could just say uh, mandatory uh, life ending. <laughs> <laughs> End of life, mercy, removal. <laughs> I don't know. So stupid. Missouri State Rep Eric Burleson, good guy named Eric, he along with other sh- uh, gun owners used a copy of that proposed bill, which I just mentioned, uh, for target practice at a gun range. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let me see what else we got in the news. Speaker Boehner rejects the using revenue for new spending and sequester deal. That's another thing that cracks me up about this sequester deal. Both parties created this. They both agreed to this. And here we have it. Oh, Shannon, yeah. we are requesting, uh, we're getting have Jake buy us little Snicker bars those Golden Note Beltivas that I like, little cutie oranges, and water. Is there anything in particular you'd like him to pick up at the Kroger's? Uh, I really that? like those little Bel- Belvita bars. Okay, really well, good. very good. That's good. That's good. Beltiva. Beltiva. Oh, we should get some like, creamer. Com- creamer? For coffee. Uh, we need some creamer for coffee. Uh, Jake says no. <laughs> no. I think you were combining Jake, Jake, the Beltiva hey, and Beltiva. Jake, Beltiva. Hey, Jake, oh, Jake vetoed your creamer. 
Yeah. Good for you, Jake. He uses it. You know what I like? She's when an Jake, overspender. I, I like. I like. I like when Jake asserts himself. It's like the other day I came in here and I requested a certain song. Yeah. He flipped me off, and I said, "Hey, that's good, Jake." <laughs> Sometimes you like when Jake You're pushes I'm okay. back. You know, he pushed back. I said, "Hey, Jake, can you find this?" He just flipped me the bird. Yeah. All right, I respect that. Yeah. Jake's a complete pushover when I tell him stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just walk all over Jake. I wonder, Jake, does your parents and family members listen to our show? I hope they do. We hope he's we on do. the phone with Frishes, Frishes. with Wanda, from with Frishes. A, Wanda. That's a perfect Frisch's name. <laughs> Isn't it? You're right. You see a Wanda Frisch's, working Frisch's. You know what? Yeah. The Frisch's waitresses are special, and half of them are named Wanda. <laughs> Wanda. Man. I'm going to name If I have an ugly child. What are you going to name it? Wanda. Wanda? It's a girl. A boy named Wanda. Boy named a Wanda. A girl named Wanda. <laughs> what do you think about that, Shannon? Our first child could be Wanda. <laughs> that was my grandma's name. Oh, it's a great name. I love the name <laughs> Wanda. It's for attractive people, really high class citizens. Love Wanda. All right. You wonder why Sue America you know why America's baby. going to hell in a handbasket? The United States Department of Agriculture says fifty percent of field workers are illegal immigrants. Farmers say eight out of ten are undocumented. Farmers say, according to Wall Street Journal, Americans have little or no interest to do the physical seasonal jobs at their farms. Because America is fat and lazy. It's sad that it's become that way. They don't work hard like the bulldog. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, consistent with our all ACDC day, this is Rock and Roll Train on Class X Radio. Ride that rock and roll. This is the bulldog on Class X Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, coming up at 830, we are going to have Senator Rand Paul. From the university, not university, from the state of Kentucky. And uh, he will, of course, probably endorse both Louisville and Vanderbilt, excuse me, both Louisville and UK uh, for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I got uh, a few sports questions I'd like to ask him. All right. By the way, Rand Paul's first big event up here for the Tea Party was at Bulldogs and in Independence. Really? Yep. Yep. Uh, ladies, Shannon and, working <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, we know you tune in uh, sometimes for the news. Sometimes for my commentaries, sometimes for the great class rock music, but we also know that you always tune in for, for Shannon's yeah, traffic I, report. What? Go ahead, Shannon. <laughs> in Cincinnati, there is a road closed due to an accident on Highway 32, both eastbound and westbound between Little Dry Run Road and Eight Mile Road. In Hamilton County, an accident on the exit ramp to I-275 westbound at US 42. In Cincinnati, a disabled vehicle blocking the right shoulder on I-71 northbound south of Red Bank Road. A disabled vehicle on Columbia Parkway at Delta Avenue. And in Kenton County, an accident blocking the right shoulder on I-71 at Dixie Highway. Wow, wow, wow. Don't like those that block the shoulder. You heard a shoulder blocked, it hurts. Yeah. yeah. Don't want the shoulder sh- blocked. Jam it on a rock and pop it back into place. I mean, I'm just telling you right now. Uh, are you? This has got to be made up. The Daily Caller is reporting the United States Postal Service is launching a new clothing line called Rain, Heat, and Snow. <laughs> That's what, what, what the heck is the Postal Service getting if all their money lost into a clothing line? Yeah, that's what we need. Man, that is messed up. The IRS has spent $1.1 million on 754 Blackberries, 14,000 air cards in 2011 that weren't used for three consecutive months. 68 of the Blackberries were never used in 2011, and technology devices seem to be issued due to job classification, regardless of whether or not a need for it exists. You know what you don't want, folks? You don't want that employer to have control over your phone because they will check it out. Mm, look who they're texting. Got to have your own phone, right? Oh, yeah. You don't use a Coca-Cola phone, do you? Nope. Mm-hmm. By the way, those of you that might have a phone on mine, because I have a lot of people that work for me, I do not have time to check your freaking phone. (laughs) I mean, don't you always marvel about nosy people? Like, who has time to be nosy? I don't have time to be nosy. Uh, Michigan is considering taking over the city of Detroit due to its financial emergency. Yeah, you go on up there, uh, chief. (laughs) Going to that mess. What a dump. Yeah, dump, dump, dump is right. Speaking of dumps, Mm -hmm. did... uh... We ever get a dump button? We ever no, we don't have a dump button. 
and talk to Spry about that? Yeah, Spry. Spry. You know what? I think we've fallen out with Spry. Really? He just yeah, I mean, we might us. not even be on the air right <laughs> now for all we know. <laughs> you know what it is? I think Wild Man Walker's poisoned us. I think he has spread vicious lies to yeah. to oh, Rhonda right. and uh, Bill about us. And uh, we, like you said, we may not even be on the air right now. So uh, if we're not on the air... Well, let's just, yeah. let's just roll with it. Let's pretend. We're still not paying your vacation to spring training, fat boy. For the 11th consecutive <laughs> year, him. federal information shows drug overdose deaths increased in 2010. This is sad news. 38,329 drug overdose deaths were reported in the U.S. with prescription drugs being involved in around 60% of them. Oh, I got I to gotta, I gotta taunt somebody in a piece of litigation. Taunt. Dun, 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 dun. You know that uh, I got these cases against Dr. Shear for the prescription drug overdose, right? Well, yesterday, a former employee of Dr. Shear's for many years, who kind of knows a lot about a lot of stuff, stopped by the old office to speak to us and give us a little bit of interesting information. Can you say, burn the toast? Fat lady sing, turn out the light. It's over. Good stuff. <laughs> Pig is roasted, huh? Mm-hmm. And what was really interesting is I predicted at the outset when I found out who his personal legal counsel was, I said, I predict that we learn X, Y, Z. And yesterday, we not only learned X, Y, Z, we learned A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You get the metaphor. Um, I'm glad you've got something to play with, Garrett. Thank you. It's a little more quiet, He's right? like, how old are you? 24. You're like a little boy. I man. know. I'm I swear to God. Immature as hell. But thank God, that doesn't make noise. Doesn't make noise. It's harmless. It's just a little now, stress there's another, there's another a stress boob. There's another, deep, there's another deep question. Fake or real, or do you care? Don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you speak for most people like yeah. that, you know. <laughs> I can you can you imagine some guy going, Well, you know, I just I, I, I liked her. She was sweet, nice personality, but uh sound like Richard Dixon here. Oh, sweet and nice personality, but uh, they were fake. And I just said, I'm sorry. Couldn't deal with I'm it. I'm sorry, I, these are fake. I don't like fake and uh, <laughs> I, I left her on the park bench. Hey, if you if you have that many uh, I just want to tell you something, Dick. Suitors. I just want to tell you something, Dick. You're messed up, man. <laughs> fake, not fake. Real cigar, fake cigar. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I agree. I agree with Bill. But I, I don't care either. But Maria's are real. I just want you all to know. Housekeepers, I think they were fake. I don't know. Arnold? I really think, man, <laughs> that it doesn't matter. Dude. <laughs> Dude, I don't know that we should unnaturally put things into our bodies. That's why I've gone vegan in the past several months. <laughs> hey, are those real or are they vegetables? <laughs> you know what we never cover because I just generally think it's – I put in my, my newsletter, babies. but the world news. Let's see if – oh, this is big news. In Brussels, $50 million in diamonds were stolen from the Brussels airport in an overnight raid – Eight armed robbers disguised as police officers on Monday night. Took them five minutes. Can you say hoorah? Nice. Now, see, those are the kind of robberies that the people support. Yeah. <laughs> no one got hurt. Come on, man. Fifty million in diamonds. Yeah, that's a pretty big heist. Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Good for those I wonder guys. who also, baby, they better friend. have insurance. You like Brussels huh. sprouts? Story no, of mine. I hate them. I'm, I'm a basic vegetable guy. Yeah. Green beans, corn. Carrots, salad, we can handle zucchini, Ugh. mushrooms, tomatoes, which is actually a fruit. But you know, you can have your spinach, you can have your Brussels sprouts, you can have your asparagus. Uh, you don't like asparagus? asparagus. Yeah. yeah. I like the urine smell after. You know, I'm trying to talk asparagus. about world affairs, and you're bringing up vegetables. <laughs> I used do you, quit hey, doing hey, stories about hey, Brussels. Hey, do you not think that maybe, just maybe, that our Bulldog Nation cares that in Tunisia the government refused? The plan of Prime Minister Hamadai Jabali to replace the government with independent technocrats. Do you think maybe Bulldog Nation cares more about that than vegetables? I think probably so. Absolutely not. And the Germans' constitution, okay, 
They're thinking about uh, allowing same-sex couples under their constitution. In Germany? Yeah. You know what that makes me think of? What? Sauerkraut. Do you like sauerkraut? I hate sauerkraut. <laughs> you know what I always say? You know somebody will eat anything if they can eat the following things. Turtle soup, sauerkraut, and liver. Oh. That's the trio. If you can eat those, you can eat anything. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I want you to go out this morning, not drink alcohol. Not, oh, by the way, I'm, <laughs> I got something about beer when we come back. I want you to drink milk, orange juice or water, or tomato juice or any hybrid thereof. But I want you to have it on me in ACDC on Class X Radio. It's the Bulldog on Class X Radio, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury. You know, the post office says rain, heat, or snow. Well, guess what? We deliver a traffic report. If it's rain, heat, snow, hail, windy, breezy, overcast, cloudy, partly cloudy, partly sunny, icy roads, clear roads, dark, light outside, it makes no difference. Shannon, a traffic girl, shows up to give you a superb traffic report. In Cincinnati, there is a road closed due to an accident on Highway 32, both eastbound and westbound between Little Dry Run Road and Eight Mile Road. In Hamilton County, there is an accident blocking the exit ramp on I-275 westbound at US 42. There's slow traffic from Reed Hardman Highway, exit 47. In Kenton County, an accident blocking the right shoulder on 7175 at US 42 and Dixie Highway. And in Hamilton County, an accident on Glenway Avenue at Quebec Road. Very good. Very, very good. I tell you right now, uh, I, I am having a great day in part because I am rocking it at the brakes with getting work done. I am a multitasky, multitasky kind of guy. And Frisch's has arrived. And we still don't have Frisch's as a sponsor. I do want to thank <laughs> Custom Clean, Window World, and Jim True Ford for being sponsors of the show. And they're clearly, clearly much better sponsors than any kind of sponsor that wild man walker would ever be able to secure i have no idea what kind of sponsors he has and i don't really care remember coming up Rand paul will be here at 8 30 uh, i will be ready to interview him and as always and he'll do a great job you know he's my kind of guy he went to washington dc and said hey let's cut 600 billion now of course nobody would go along with him last night when i was staying up late and as always let me tell you what I did last night, though, that was pretty, pretty cool. But before I get to that, I watched a beer documentary and how beer came to pass. And they say, like cavemen, they accidentally made beer when, like, water got mixed with hops. And it kind of fermented. It kind of discovered beer by accident, like most things. And then it changed. And then they extrapolate this out that because of beer, it created surveying because they divided up the hops. You know, I mean... They basically said beer was like in everything, like cuneiform, the first writing. There was apparently like 130 forms of beer written on cuneiform. Apparently cavemen got drunk a lot. And then, of course, now I do this for a fact. In Europe and even in the colonial times, the water would kill you because everything was in it. So people drank ale and they drank beer because it was protected, because it was, you know, the way they made it. So you'd wake up in the morning and you'd have a beer. You know, you'd be thirsty late at night, you'd have a beer. Kids walking around drunk, adults walking around drunk, everybody plastered. And guess what they also did? They drank like 30 times the amount of beer that we drink today. And there was no DUIs. Isn't that amazing? They drank wow. that many beers <laughs> in 1776, and nobody got a DUI. There's a, there's a brewery called there's a brewery called Dogfish Head, mm -hmm. and they went to Egypt and they uh, found some bottles that had right. beer in it. They scraped out. All they the talked stuff. about that. They found what flavors they had, mm -hmm. and then they recreated it. Yes, beer. I forget oh. what the beer is called, but it's Dogfish. And Fish also, Head. I think it was called Jake's the, our beer the Green Fox Tavern. The Green Fox Tavern in Boston. I think that was the name of it. Is where the Revolutionary War Cheers. really got started. Really got started, and they were all drunk. I mean, like Sam Adams, John Hancock, getting plastered on beer. Or ale, and they said, hey, let, let's start a revolution. We, we ought to do sports bite. Like like, then they guys. cranked up the Beatles. Let's, and do, let's, do, let's do sports drunk. You know, drunk guys. I say black sports. 
<laughs> Chuck will be a nervous. Chuck player. would get Chuck would be, so we mad. Could, Chuck, I'm going to do it. We could do Asian sports. We can do Hispanic sports. But if you do black sports, oh, Heaven my God. Forbid. Heaven forbid. Hey, let's do whitey sports. <laughs> Don't you love the way do Tracy? Whitey sports. Don't you love the way Tracy Jones used the word whitey? <laughs> whitey. <laughs> Hey, while you're eating, can you get me an ACDC song? I mean, I'm just curious Absolutely about that. Absolutely not. Oh, yeah. I'm going to look up rock. Oh, hey, history today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Emancipation Proclamation. You know, isn't that event? We got this event that's on our newsletter, and I think it's like old news. Is And I, and I want to keep it up, but it, has the Kyle Babcock Memorial Fund already kind of like, is that over? If it is, take it off. If not, just leave it on. We were happy to help out those people. Uh, oh, I got some great stuff from Maxim Magazine. All oh, you guys are going to love it. Good old Maxim Magazine. Terry Donahue's giving me some things. I'm going to make fun of Garrett Sablehouse's uh, bio. Um, I got a funny email from somebody about their sex tape. Oh, yeah. Speaking uh, of bios, hey, Shannon, funny. did yeah. you turn your bio in? No, oh, my God. Wow. We all pulled through. Yeah. Uh, Jake and I had our bios and, in by and, what? Midnight you, last hey, night. And you wonder why nobody takes you serious. By midnight right. last night. This is why nobody takes it's you serious. deadline, Shan. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, this is Hell's Bells on Class X Radio. And this is funny. Troy McKinley said in 1981, Simon Kenton basketball uh, season, that he thought it was odd that this St. Henry's would be the team that always played this song at their home games. Kind of weird on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Good morning, boys and girls. This is Mr. Rogers. You no, know, there's all kinds of reasons people tell you to stay in school. Sure, you want to stay in school, don't you? Well, one of the reasons why you should stay in school is, little boys and girls, is you learn how to read. And if you learn how to read, one day you can grow up and be a traffic girl. Sure, you'd like to be a traffic girl, wouldn't you? Go ahead, Shannon. You're now up. Who was that hair? Where'd you all find it? <laughs> she got hair on her boob. She got what? hair on her boob. Oh, I thought that came out of your food. That's the breast. Just so you all oh. know, folks. Oh, okay. Came Garrett, off the boob. Garrett feels Ew. compelled to play with the plastic breast augmentation left here by Dr. Kurtzman. Yeah. My stress boob. Your stress. All right, go ahead, Shannon. In Cincinnati, there's a road closed due to an accident on Highway 32, both eastbound and westbound between Little Dry Run Road and Eight Mile Road. Off my boob, Jay. In Hamilton County, an accident on Glenway Avenue at Quebec Road and an accident on the exit ramp to I-275 westbound at US-42 in Lebanon. All right. Rand Paul's coming up at 830. Today on the newsletter, and this is worth uh, me sharing with you because it's good stuff. President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1963, excuse me, 1863, announcing that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious areas are henceforward shall be free. Initially, the Civil War between the North and South was fought by the North to prevent the secession of the Southern states and preserve the Union. Even though sectional conflicts over slavery had been a major cause of the war, Ending slavery was not a goal of the war. That changed on September 22, 1862, when President Lincoln issued his preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, which stated that slaves in those states or parts of states still in rebellion as of January 1, 1863, would be declared free. 100 days later, with the rebellion unabated, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Lincoln's bold step was to change the goals of the war was a military measure and came just a few days after the Union's, eh, not too much victory, at the Battle of Antietam. With this proclamation, he hoped to inspire all blacks and slaves in the Confederacy, in particular, to support the Union cause, keep England and France from giving political recognition and military aid to the Confederacy. Because it was a military measure... The Emancipation Proclamation was limited in many ways. It applied only to states that had succeeded from the Union, leaving slavery untouched in the loyal border states. He didn't want to make Maryland, Kentucky mad. It also expressly exempted parts of the Confederacy that had already come under Union control. Most important, the freedom it promised depended upon Union military victory. There you go. Everybody thought it had freed all the slaves, but it did not. That was why... The 13th Amendment was necessary to pass. 
what I was going to say before about last night is I worked really, 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 really late last night. And I always got to make a judgment call. Do I go up and get in bed and I fear waking up my wife? Or do I just sleep downstairs? Last night, I built a rip-roaring fire. And I slept for two hours from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. in front of the fire on the floor by the rock hearth. It was something out of Norman Rockwell. It really was. In fact, I wish somebody there was there to take a painting of it, picture of it. That sounds really, really... By the way, my staff uh, busted me. I was lying on the floor in my office because I had too many boxes on my couch. I was taking a nap on the floor with my feet propped up in a chair for like a 15-minute nap the other day. And they took a picture of it, and they've posted it on Facebook. You want to see how I roll? I can prove I can nap. I'm like, I can lay down on the floor right there and take a nap. It's Not a, me. It's a, it's a skill set. It's a skill set. That's why I don't camp. Got to be in a bed. Oh, camping. Who, no camp. Camping. It sucks. Is, uh, oh, it's horrible. Camping's horrible. Or Who bellies. likes to camp? I, I agree with that. Uh, put <laughs> me in a resort. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm right with you, baby. Who wants to camp? Don't get that at all. Uh, yeah. Let get me the see gorge. here something else. Guys, have at it. <laughs> all right. Maxim Magazine gives us the 10 worst sounds ever. According to Maxim Magazine, this is the 10 worst sounds ever. Number 10. Jim Scott Show. The Electric Grill. Mm. Ah, okay. mm. Number 9. Jim Scott Show. <laughs> they must follow it. You know, it's a nation station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number 9 is Crying Baby. Number 8. Squealing Bicycle Tires. Number 7. Angle grinder. What's an angle grinder? Any guys uh, shop kind of people? Hell Six. No. Female it. scream. I don't know about mm. that. You know, sometimes. I mean, I use it. Depends <laughs> on the scream. Depends uh, on the. Five. <laughs> nails on a blackboard. That's number one, is it yeah, not? Awesome. Uh, four. A ruler scraping on a bottle. What? That's messed up. Chalk on a blackboard. Not as bad as fingernails. Two. How come the. Blackboard has two of the ten. Interesting. Why well, think uh, the blackboard's two, relevant? A fork scraping against glass. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. bad. Yeah, but come on. Well, why not a spoon scraping against glass? And number one, a knife scraping against a bottle. I'm so no, hell one scrapes. Be nails I think number one is the alarm clock. In I agree. Oh yeah. That's yeah. A bad that's, the sound. Worst noise ever. <laughs> that's a good point. Yes. Real good point, Jake. <laughs> All right, now um, you know what my boss does at Coke? He, he sucks his like teeth when he's done eating. I hate that. Oh, I by, by can't way, stand that. Do you realize? How about somebody cracking their knuckles, Shannon? <laughs> Love a good knuckle crack. Or pounding a game. Oh, come. Oh gosh. By the way, guess what Garrett included in his bio? I told you. He will go to his with. grave believing the Red Hot Chili Peppers is the greatest yeah. band ever formed. I will. Oh, my God. I won't it read is, the rest dude. Of it. It's not it's Read not the whole thing. Radio. Read the whole thing. All right. You all want to hear a little bit more about the bio. Garrett. Let's read bio. Jake's, too. Jake. Garrett got his start uh, in the radio in 2008 yeah. with Clear Channel, producing various programs for 700 WLW, including Reds and Bengals broadcasts. A native of Cincinnati, and Garrett hails from the mean streets of Anderson Township, right. where he graduated <laughs> from Anderson High School in 2006 Hard. and went on to earn a Bachelor of Journalism degree. You never guessed that. From the University of Cincinnati. An avid sports fan, Garrett can be found at most Bearcats basketball games. Also a music lover, Garrett frequents many concerts. Uh, he's going to Elton John with Shannon. He's going to the boy band concert with Shannon. we got romance. <laughs> That's in there. we got romance <laughs> blooming in the studio. We'll go to his grave believing the Red Hot Chili Peppers is the greatest band ever formed. Dun, 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 Pretty dun, accurate. Dun. Now, what's Whoever Garrett? wrote that? Right, genius. Jake, you got yours? Jake? Uh, I don't have mine on hand, no. Oh, uh, he doesn't have it with him. Did it mine go was, something like this? Mine was a lot shorter. Did it something like this? Jake Slagle hails from Northern <laughs> Kentucky, where he plays amateur hockey. He went to Dixie Heights High School, where he received his degree. He currently volunteers at the zoo, where he provides fun zoo facts on the Bulldog Nation morning show. In addition to that, Sla- Jake Slagle loves his family. Yeah, that was it, exactly. <laughs> You know, we, we made one for Jake. Let's make... And he dreams of going to a U Hefner party. Should we make Shannon's? Shannon? Uh, Shannon, where did you go to high school? Connor. All right. 
Shannon uh, Cook is school. the Bulldog Nation morning traffic girl. She graduated from Connor, where she received a bachelor degree in journalism and traffic science. She yep. went on to Northern Kentucky University, where she failed to receive her degree, before <laughs> going to Harvard University, where she graduated with honors in traffic school. Very accurate. Very good. Yeah. A couple uh <laughs> I tell you right now, I've been been getting that degree. Oh my God, we went way past. We got to play a song. Whoa! (laughs) Girls got a rhythm on Class X Radio, and we come back. Rand Paul's coming up at 8 30. The Bulldog on Class X Radio. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury. You know, some of these television news folks might have a traffic person, and they all really have the looks for radio. We have a traffic person with looks for television. Shannon, go ahead. Thank you. In Hamilton County, there is an accident on Martin Luther King Drive at Jefferson Avenue, an accident on Glenway Avenue at Quebec Road, an accident on Martin Luther King Drive east of Clifton Avenue, an accident on the exit ramp to I-275 westbound at US-42, and in Cincinnati, an ac- the accident is cleared on Highway 32, both eastbound and westbound between Little Dry Run Road and 8 Mile Road. All right, clean it up, baby. Great reporting. Thank you. Yeah. An A today? You get an A today. Thanks. <laughs> C. Now we have we have we have coming up uh, Rand Paul, uh, and of course he's right in the middle of everything that's going on in the crazy crazy world of Washington. I also want to report that uh, remember coming up this Saturday from twelve to two at the Blue Star Building on Spiral Drive in Florence. Right behind the Guitar Center, uh, there is going to be a gun rally. Uh, Congressman Massey is going to speak. And, of course, we'll have our Second Amendment rights uh, well represented. You know what? With uh, I'm going to take the liberty. Uh, you guys can go start texting and emailing all your friends what you do anyway while I'm speaking always. So Wait. You get the break. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity uh, to say a few things before we have Rand Paul on in the introduction uh, of him. You know, I am someone who I, I am. I have to say this. I, I consider myself conservative, and I consider myself libertarian, and I also consider myself pragmatic. I once called myself a pragmatic realist, and I am a person of my convictions. But at the same time, I'm also not so. How should I say on certain issues and things to where, for the greater good. I could uh, compromise to make something happen. I mean, along the lines of what Reagan did, what Abraham Lincoln had to do, so forth and so on. I really, really, really can. On the other hand, on the other hand, when you are in a situation, which is the political environment now in Washington, D.C., where, and this is, this is what has destroyed the political process in America. And I don't care what anybody says. You heard it from me. This is what's destroyed the political process. There is no, I mean absolutely no break like there once was in the politicking uh, with television, with cable, with the internet, with the massive communications, with the political, and it's just the reality of it. In fact, you play the game to your own peril from a political survivorship standpoint. The political operatives, the people that make all the money running campaigns, have made it mandatory that it is 24-7, 365, you've got to be quote-unquote politic. So nobody lays down their swords long enough to reach some kind of an agreement. Now, in that atmosphere, in that atmosphere where you are not going to reach agreements, the way I look at it is you either have the majority and you're going to get done what you think needs to get done or you're in the minority and you might as well stick to your guns and raise hell because you know you're not going to get what you want and you can only hope to block the bad things that the other party wants to pass now i marvel at the fact that the republicans controlled the house thanks to the tea party in 2010 that is plain and flat out the truth Remember, it was all about the budget issues, the national debt, Obamacare, and the Republicans took control of the House. Thank God, in 2010. Now, after the 2012 election, we had, Obama was still in the White House, the Senate controlled 
by the Democrats and the Republicans controlled the House. Why? Why? John Boehner and the Republicans decided that they were now in a weaker position than they were in 2011 uh, boggles my mind. It's like, hello, you still control the House. Now, they'll talk about, well, yeah, but he won the election. That's a bunch of baloney. And when I hear the Democrats, since the presidential election, being giddy with glee about, oh, this is wonderful, you know, the president's reelected and everything else. Well, you know what? I'd be like, if I was a Republican that was in the House or the Senate, I'd be like, well, just because the president won re-election, we're still blocked here, thanks to the Republicans controlling the House. And I would not run. I would not retreat. I would not back up. I would step on the gas, full speed ahead, arm in arm, with what those in the Tea Party represent. Let's deal with this debt. Let's deal with this budget. Let's deal with regulation and tax. Let's get the economy rolling again by those things. Simple concepts work every time. And I'm telling you, it is a breath of fresh air to have somebody elected from Kentucky to serve in the United States Senate like Rand Paul. Rand Paul, when he went to Congress, when he went to Congress, excuse me, Senate, went, went to Senate, he showed up and said, hey, let's cut $600 billion right now. And they all look at him like these, you know, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, we're running trillion-dollar deficits every year. It seems to me that cutting $600 billion right now is a good idea. He found no takers. Rand Paul, if he had more of him in Washington, we could solve our problems. But the problem that we have is we have Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, and Barack Obama. And you know what they are? They're problem child. They're problem children. Everybody knows what a problem child is. ACDC once sung, you know, sing about it. They're problem child. That's the problem. We come back. We got Rand Paul on Class X Radio. Oh, go on Class X Radio. Oh, I'm telling you. We've got a press conference going to go on at 9 o'clock upstairs in the old law office. Uh, yesterday we filed seven lawsuits against this Dr. Durrani that, uh, I mean, just so you all know, those of you in the medical field, the local orthopedic and neurosurgeons are basically testifying against this doctor that these were unnecessary surgeries. I mean, so uh, that's pretty powerful. That doesn't happen every day of the week, if you know what I mean. It just doesn't happen every day of the week. Uh, but what do we got going on traffic? In Hamilton County, there is an accident on Martin Luther King Drive at Jefferson Avenue. An accident on Glenway Avenue at Quebec Road, and an accident on Martin Luther King Drive east of Clifton Avenue. Good old east of Clifton. West of Clifton is good, but east of Clifton is bad. I got an update on the Withrow case. Are you ready for this? There's like 20 video cameras all around Withrow, and we hit them with a subpoena for all the video surveillance. And this is hilarious. They said, well, you know, we tape over those, you know, um, we can't really produce those to you. And I'm sitting there thinking, and they're getting a pretty harshly worded email from me this morning. It's going to go something like this. Uh, If the police showed up at Withrow and they knew that there was this fight, wouldn't be the first thing that they would do is secure all the video? Of course they would. And if they did... And now they're not producing it. Uh, I would think maybe the video hurt them and they're not going to produce the video. Or B, they didn't do it, which means they're incompetent. Either way, we win. But I've told him, I said, you're not going to tell me that you've got a fight, which is that big. It's in the news and everything else. And you've got video cameras that would show everything that happens in the hallway where some of the fight was. And you're not going to have that video and secured that video. I smell a rat. As Patrick Henry once said, I smell a rat. So there's the update on that, and that's supposed to go to trial on Friday, but my guess it'll probably get booted. 
it'll probably get kicked out again. And they and, and we're not we're not backing down. We're saying no 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 no. We need to have everything. Oh, by the way, a little life observation. Don't you hate it when your shoestrings break and you don't have another shoestring like in your pocket or the drawer? So you figure out a way to tie your shoe with a broken shoestring, kind of like now ladies probably don't do this, but us guys do. You know, like tennis shoes and whatnot. I need new black shoestrings. Look, look at Shannon. We're just might as well have a conversation ourselves because <laughs> Jake's playing on a computer on his phone, and Garrett is eyeing that like a good guy. He is eyeing. He is not going to miss the, the phone. senator's phone call when it happens. <laughs> he is not going to miss it. You know what? Sometimes happens is important people like Senator Paul sometimes get tied up or taken away, and things happen, and they are unable to uh, make it, which is okay. Uh, Governor Governor Sanford, uh, former Governor Sanford of South Carolina, has announced. His campaign for the uh, Congress, and it was interesting to see his first campaign commercial. He alluded to his sins, and he asked grace for forgiveness. I said, ah, go ahead. What the heck? Now, this is a message that I got, and this, let this be a warning to all of you out there in Bulldog Nation, okay? And I'm going to keep uh, confidentiality by not mentioning names. My name is mm, and I was hoping you could help me guide me in the right direction is what do you think I should do about this? A few months ago, I did a dumb mistake, and I let my boyfriend at the time videotape us having sex. About a month ago. Now, girls, what Take happens one. all the time is, is <laughs> as much as you love him, as much as he loves you at the moment, a month from now, he's going to break up with you. About a month ago, I broke up with him mm, and have not spoken to him since. I assumed he deleted the video. Uh, uh, no. no. <laughs> but a few days ago, I got a text claiming I was on an adult website. I checked it out, and it turned out I was. He put the video of us up without my consent or knowledge. He also put my full name in the title. I was actually just informed that I would be starting a new job soon, and I'm not sure if they're going to research my name. When I Google my name, the video comes up all over the Internet. Guys, if you text me, no, I would not do that to her. I had emailed the website asking them to take it down, and they have not responded yet. Uh, Don't stick around the phone. My biggest concern is potential employers seeing the link to the phone. Hey, you might get a job as a result of that. Uh, Having me get denied for work because of that. I know he put it up for revenge. No. And if employers or anyone, for that matter, see the video, his revenge will have worked. Could he get in trouble for this? Do you have any advice on what I can do to get this video down? Thank you and regards. Mm -mm -mm. And my response was, you are S-O-L. There is nothing nothing you can do. do. Yeah, Video, do it. It's called reasonable expectation of privacy. He puts it on some site now if he's making money on it you can maybe ask for part of the money but now he ain't asking for money he's throwing it up there on one of those you know amateur sites you know throw it up on there don't take video or pictures never 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 never. never. especially not now because that's exactly what happens to them do it all the time (laughs) need more of that out there how many how many adult websites are you appearing on garrett uh, uh, I don't have any videos up there, but I have four bookmarked. <laughs> Got a YJ, Red Tube, and Pornhub. Oh God, stop it! Stop so it! Stop it! My fourth. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury: a lawyer is sometime called a hired gun. Did you know ACDC had a song, "Deep Track" for you, Class X Radio listener? Guns for hire on Class X Radio. <laughs> this is the Goo Boo Dog on Class X Radio. Just so you know, had some phone difficulties. Senator Paul did call. The little red light here did not light up, so we're looking at nothing. So I uh, just want everybody to know that uh, we apologize for the in- inconvenience. Apologize, Senator Paul. Apologize to anybody and everybody involved in this snafu, which is out of our control. And those of you that did not know, we do our show not from Middletown. Uh, but we do our show right here in the WDJO studios in the Fox 19 Plaza, two floors down from my law office. And uh, therefore, um, you know, we use this studio and why that light, was it light going now? I mean, I, maybe I'm imagining a light. No. 
We'll get them tomorrow. But that's my a email. shame. That's a, that's a shame. Now, before we uh, uh, move on, can we have the final uh, traffic report for today from Shannon, the traffic girl? In Hamilton County, there is an accident on Martin Luther King Drive at Jefferson Avenue, an accident on Glenway Avenue at Quebec Road, an accident on Martin Luther King Drive east of Clifton Avenue, and the accident that was on Highway 32 eastbound and westbound between Little Dry Run and 8 Mile Road is cleared. All right. And uh, I want, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury to know that I've had a most productive legal day uh, doing my radio show at the breaks pretty quite remarkable You're i got an a, excellent multi i am a multitasking yes. dude am i not <laughs> i'm pretty good at these kind of things you know this obamacare is just mm-mm-mm. here's some statistics for you uh for a let me see here some stats 62 percent americans will be unaffected by the obama medicare expansion States refusing the expansion represent 28% of the U.S. population. States which may refuse, 18%. Uh, States already over the 133% eligibility requirement, 16%. States in the 100 to 133, 22%. Uh, Really only 16% of the U.S. population stands to benefit from the increased Medicaid eligibility, but it's going to pound and pound the others. Um, it's really going to be a disaster. And you got like Ohio, Ohio, they, oh, we're expanding things. You know, we're, we're passing this off to the buck. Well, the reality is we're all in the same boat when it comes to, uh, good old federal tax dollars. It's not one over the other. We are all in the same boat. If you know what I mean. But no, nah, no, no. State's got to be selfish. Well, I will do it. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll get that federal tax dollars money. And, of course, I do believe, I, I can't then know if Steve Bashir in Kentucky's made up his mind or not. Of course, Ohio, you already know that your leader in the state of the state uh, address acknowledged that he has an Ohio will expand under Obamacare. Not a good move in my opinion. You know, it's not what it was cracked up to be. It's really an economic boondoggle. But you know what? Not everybody cares. We live in a very selfish, selfish society. Everybody's like, what's in it for me? Unlike me, who as a plaintiff's attorney actually has supported medical malpractice reform if it helps the greater good. Because that's the kind of guy I am. You won't find a plaintiff's attorney that does that, but I do. All right, uh, what's what's uh, Mr. Garrett working so hard on over there? Emailing Senator. Ah, apologizing for his failure to do his job this morning and get the senator on. Right. <laughs> Boom, sent. I'm gonna th- blame you for the entire snafu. I'm a calm. I know Rand. I'm a calm person. I apologize. Know, Rand? Hey, Rand, it's Garrett here. Yeah, thanks. Sorry him. about that. Yeah. Get you back on. I don't want him thinking hey. we're running some. Hey, I know. I know how to take care of this with Rand Paul. Let's just blame Obama. Yeah, Obama. Obama's team sabotaged our show this morning. And our, I, I do want to tell you, Bill Spry, I had Garrett eyeballing that phone like me eyeballing it. Yeah, light definitely doesn't isn't working right now. That's not Spry's fault. It, it's should Kaufman. We, I'm a, should, should we sue Roger Kaufman? Kaufman's ass. We're suing you, Roger. We don't care that you let us use this for free. All your worth. We don't care that you provide us all this nice surroundings to let us desecrate your walls. Yeah. We're still, and we don't care that I'm your lawyer suing Dusty Rhodes or defending you against Dusty Rhodes' basis lawsuit. We're still going to sue you, Roger. For this, we have to yeah. for this snafu. It's going to be a billion dollars. We were going to get endorsements uh, from political campaign of, uh, consultants for having Rand Paul on. And we missed out on all of it, and our damages are going to be huge. Plus, we think you did it intentionally with malice, so it's, we're going to ask for punitive damages, so times 10, whatever that's going to be. Roger, you might as well close we're it up. i sue you out of house and home there, Roger. Yep. Take your house. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Have you been to his house? I think he lives in Anderson, so it might be worth taking, right? Nah, I'd help it. Up Is he here, Bill? Nah, I think he does. <laughs> I think he lives. Westchester or something. Westchester. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, every dog has their day. I hope today is yours. By the way, Chuck was right. I did not have a bad day yesterday after having a good day Monday. 
So maybe my day today will be as good as the day on Tuesday because I was expecting a bad day after the good day on Monday, but it wasn't a bad day. So maybe Wednesday, <laughs> which I'm expecting to be a bad day, won't be a bad day. Radio Superbie tomorrow on Class X Radio.